Hello, Beauty News family. Welcome to Beauty News. This is the 28th of February edition. We're going to be talking about new release beauty products and updates on things that we've talked about in the past. Not too many updates. Not too many. Um, One. One. To be precise. She's right at the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. Zoeva. Mm -hmm. So we talked about these visionary light multi-use face powders a little while ago. We didn't know that they were called that. No, we didn't. We were just like, these pretty things. <laughs> um, so essentially, the I, look, I've, I'm just going to read the description from mm-hmm. Zoeva because I feel like it's almost like they don't even tell you what these are. It's kind of funny. Right. So they're I'm, I'm braced. designed to provide maximum versatility. It carries next generation pearl pigments that capture the light and deliver pure color performance in a unique powder formula with a springy cream texture. Oh. Available in three silky soft and ultra blendable metallic shades that melt luxuriously on the eyes, face or body. The innovative formula delivers a uniquely wet and foil-like finish on skin for a truly luminous experience. All right. I mean, they're highlighters, but you could have just said that. But they also, <laughs> like, okay, there's one pink, one yellow, and one sort of bronzy colour. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, they could highlight some skin tones, but they would be more like an eyeshadow or a... A blush. A blush, or yeah. Like, so it's interesting. Yeah. They just, they just, just mishmashed a bunch of shimmery powders yep. into a pan, and they're just like, use it how you want. Yeah. I'm curious but about the in cream. Colors that are, yeah, yeah, cream to powder type thing. Bouncy, I think they call yeah. it. Springy, sorry. Springy. Springy cream texture, which means they're going to dry out over time. Possibly, unless they're that baked formula like the um, Too Faced Diamondy. Oh, yeah, 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 maybe. Could be. I don't yeah. know. Anyway, because I, I can't imagine they're making cream creams, to be I honest. Think, no, I, I was thinking these might be a little bit like the... Um, Oh, Bare Minerals Bouncy Eyeshadow Formula. I don't reckon it is because from what we've seen in the Instagram photos of these, Mm. no one had disturbed the pan that much. Right, okay. So I reckon they're just highlighters. Yeah. Anyway, they're not very highlighty in terms of colours, but they're gigantic pans of metallic stuff. Yep, and there's three shades. There's Supreme, which is a metallic raspberry rose uh, with pink and purple. Interesting. There's Unbelievable, which is a metallic gold with golden pearls. And there's Surreal, which is a metallic bronze with silver and bronze pearls. Available mm. now at Ulta Beauty for US $26 redos. Excellent. Okay, let's get into the new stuff. We're going to start with Benefit because mm-hmm. we've got some things. We do have some so, things. So the Georgia Boxer Powder is back, um, but it's a new and improved shade. So if you liked yeah. the Georgia Peach Blush from Benefit... This isn't actually it. It's it's tweaked. Well, I can't imagine too many people liking it because wasn't it discontinued? Yes. So probably good that they've tweaked it. Yeah. Um, from what it looks like, it's more pigmented mm. um, because their Boxo blush powders or Boxo powder blushes, um, they were traditionally very, very sheer in pigmentation, whereas it looks like they've ramped it up. Mm. So It's kind of what I liked about them, though. Some of them were good. Some of them literally didn't do anything. Yeah, you can so see the skin. I think, you know, yes and no. I mm. think they, you know, some of them worked successfully and others were just not very good. Um, but I think this is probably a good move because um, I think they sort of, mi- in their range of blushes, they're sort of missing a nice peach and they need to revamp that range anyway. Yeah. Um, it's but anyway, a bit like old. Yeah. So Just don't fuck with Hula, okay? True. Don't, don't, don't fuck, fuck with, Hula. with Hula. I agree. Hula's great. Hula yeah. is great. Don't touch it. Um, so this is also going to be in a new palette. Mm. So they bring out these five pan palettes pretty much every year. They have been doing so for, I'm going to say four or five years, um, which is a great way to sample a bunch of their products, by the way. Um, You get Cookie Highlighter, which came out last year. You get Hula Bronzer. You get the new and improved Georgia Blush. You also get Dallas and Sugar Bomb. Yeah, wasn't Dallas discontinued 
years I, ago. Yeah, but I think once again, they're bringing these back in a reformulated right, way. Yeah. So I think they're probably once again trying to test the waters to be like, can we bring out our old favorites that like sugar bomb I had and it pretty much was like no color. Mm. So I am curious to see how this goes. I still don't think this is going to sort of revamp their brand too much, like the blush range. But um, if they're nice, then it's a nice sampling of blushes. You've got a nude, you've got a pinky tone, you've got your highlighter, your bronzer and your peach. So, yeah. um, but that has been spotted some places. Yeah. Like it was in Canada. It was, you know, people have been spotting that popping up a whole bunch of places. So, you know, just check your local benefit Yes. Stockist. There's also see when it pops up. Yeah. a mini reunion to a palette yes. that goes along with that. That contains a hula, uh, bronzer, sugar bomb and Georgia all in minis. Yes. But we have known from experience that the minis and the full size are, different. are often different formulas. So I'm yep. curious to see how this one goes. Another thing from Benefit, and now I don't know if this came to the US or <coughs> not, but it's new to Australia and they're sort of promoting it a lot at the moment. Um, and we hadn't spoken about it. So if it is elsewhere, it's old news. We never saw it. But we never saw it. So we're going no. to talk about it in case you never saw it as well. So um, they have launched their new Browsings Like a Pro palette. So if you're familiar with Browsings, it was their uh, wax and powder duo. So this comes in two shade variations. There's a light medium and a medium dark. And it comes with three large pans of wax, two of them are colored, one of them is clear, and then four shades of powder, um, as well as uh, two double-ended tools. So it's a similar concept to their mini sort of um, duo, but you just have more shade varieties here, which, you know, you could argue, are you gonna use them all? I don't no. know. But maybe throughout the seasons, you might. It's a lot of product, though. It's a lot. A it's lot. a lot of product. And to be fair, even though I didn't mind the formula of these waxes and powders, they were always way too warm. Yeah. They always made me look like I had burgundy brows. Yeah. So I'm hoping they've changed the colours a bit. But that is out now in Australia. It's 68 Australian dollars. From Bobbi Brown, we have the Skin Longwear Fluid Powder Foundation. So they're calling this a liquid to powder foundation that self-sets into a comfortable soft matte finish. So it's formulated with Power Protein Complex. To help skin look smooth and healthy, it's meant to be lightweight, sweat resistant, and control oil. Mm. Oh, and to top it all off, it helps to keep skin protected on the go with environmental blue light and UV filters. It's available in 28 shades for 40 US dollars. Yeah, so this, I think this could be a good product. Mm. Um, it sounds interesting, like liquid to powder like soft matte finish. It sounds like it's almost a BB cream for people with oilier skin that yeah. want a more matte finish, which I think sounds really nice. I do agree with um, pretty much all the comments on Instagram that were saying this needs a fourth arm in here like yeah. the, for the shade um, range to actually be sort of a decent shade range. Yeah, It does have 28 shades and to be fair, these are probably quite sheer. So, mm. um, you know, the, let's say, walnut, for example, could actually go across quite a few skin tones. But, um, yeah, they're definitely, there's, there's room in that photo for another arm with yeah. more deeper swatches yeah. for sure. Another foundation. Mm -hmm. This one's from By Terry. And this one's also going to disappoint <clears throat> people in the <clears throat> shade range. It will. Um, so this is the Hyaluronic Hydra Foundation. It's... Um, it's a hydrating, plumping and dewy foundation. It's supposed to offer 24 hour, wait, 24 seven wear. 24 no. seven. 24 seven hydration. is a week's worth of hydrated, plumped and dewy skin. Yeah, that doesn't that's, make sense, does that's it? That's a lie. That is that's, a lie. That's a lie. Unless you wear it 24 seven. Which I wouldn't yeah, recommend. I, no, I. Like, yeah, well, they're saying you apply it once and you get you get a yeah, whole week's worth of hydration. That's what that implies to me. Like if they're it wrong. said leave skin hydrated, plumped, and dewy twelve hours, you go all right. Twelve hour wear, cool, great, fab. I kind of want to try it. Doesn't say that. It says twenty four seven. 
That's a lie. That's that's wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's a SPF 30. It comes in 15 shades. It's got something called Skin Fit technology that allows you to build and blend coverage. Yeah. So I'm going to expand on that really quickly. They say that you use a dropper to deliver a precise custom application. So two drops for a sheer coverage, four drops for medium and six drops for full coverage. Right. I've heard this before and that never works. No, it doesn't. But I think Nick's tried to do that. Yeah. I think a few people, and yeah. it just doesn't work. But that's yeah. what their skin fit technology is implying. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it also is supposed to be suitable for all skin types and vegan. It's available at now... It's available now at buyterry.com for 54 euros for a 30 ml bottle. Yeah. So pretty much it's a liquidy foundation with hyaluronic acid. Yes, which um, is a lot of foundations to be fair. True, but also like, you know, this is that whole skincare infused makeup, which mm. I'm not I'm not opposed to. Like there are elements of skincare infused makeup that I think might work. So like of course when you put SPF in something Um, potentially hyaluronic acid, maybe, but I still feel like it's going to be much more effective for skin if you put your skincare underneath your foundation. Correct. Um, Because by the time you've put your primer on or done whatever and then put your foundation on, the chances of that actually having much of an effect on your skin is probably slim to none. But this might be good for people that have really, really dry, dehydrated yeah. skin. I don't know. Look, I will say I have tried some Bias Terry foundations and they are really nice. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed all of the ones that I've tried. A lot of them do have these sort of ridiculous skincare claims, kind of claims yeah. and shit like that. At the end of the day, it's marketing fucking trash. Yeah. But the products are good. Yeah. Um, like you said, people will be disappointed in the shade range which is yeah because it goes to medium dark um pretty much i like that they've done a split <clears throat> so they've got cool undertones neutral and warm mm-hmm. and then you have fair um natural which what what is natural skin tone i don't know uh medium fair medium and medium dark and they've got those categories throughout the cool neutral and warm so i do like how they've got the different undertones i think mm. that's really helpful but Again, um, unless you're going to be using this in the sheerest way, um, it's you not do. Enough. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not enough. Yeah. All right, we've got a new sunscreen from Dermalogica. I want it. I want it too. Are you listening, Dermalogica? We both want Dermalogica. it. Dermalogica. Um, so they've. It's coming out 31st of March. Mm. So it's not out just yet, um, but it is the new invisible physical defense SPF 30. It's an invisible and weightless broad spectrum sunscreen made for all skin types, including sensitive skin. So this interests me because um, they do say say goodbye to thick white residue that physical sunscreens leave behind. So they're creating a physical sunscreen, which is really great uh, because a lot of people can't use chemical sunscreens. Um, Some people are very sensitive to them. Mm. Um, So it's a physical sunscreen, but it's not supposed to be thick and heavy um greasy and greasy slick. white so yeah so it's, it, it's supposed to take away all those horrible elements of a physical sunscreen um i'm really curious about it they've got some really nice spf products in their mm. range um generally very expensive but they are very nice and uh for me personally i find physical sunscreens break me out so um i would be curious to see if they could make a good one I agree. I'm keen to see it. I'm keen. From Dior, we have a new Dior Backstage Eye Palette. This is 004 Rosewood Neutrals. So it's a nine pan palette. There is a pan of their strange pomade, weird, waxy base. Yeah, primer base thing. But there you go. It's in there. Um, And it's a beautiful mauvey purple palette. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, it's available. Look, I'm pretty sure I swatched this the other day in Sephora Australia. Um, yeah, I, so people have spotted it around. Yeah, so it's yeah. one of those releases that it, there hasn't been like a oh, it's releasing on the 24th. No, and it's and everywhere. They're, saying they're sort of sneaking coming it out. soon. Yeah, and it's going to be 49 US dollars, but it's it, come to just some places. Have yeah. a look. Yeah, yeah, have a look around. One thing that we've noticed is that these swatches are photoshopped. Uh, if you look at the shimmery red shade, which is that the or like is that the only shimmer shade? No, yeah, uh, uh, possibly most of them matte. Mm. Um, 
it's actually the same square that has just been placed on every arm, but then the borders have been moved. Yeah. Um, because it captures the light and there's actually like a line um, on there that is on every single swatch. So it's a complete fabrication, which is not the point of swatches. Yeah. And also I, I swatched this because this was my kind of colour story, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look... It doesn't do that. Like I wouldn't pay money for it and this is my colour story. I, w I was like, oh, I might buy this. And then I swatched it and I was like, oh, no, I won't. That's fair. Okay, Dose of Colors have released three new sponges to their range. Um, and they look interesting. So they did have the Seamless Beauty sponge, which was $15. And then they've made a bigger version. So the mm. Jumbo Seamless Beauty sponge, $17. It's just a bigger version. Then they have gone a little bit like a bit off track mm. uh, to create unique shapes, which I respect. Yeah. Sponges don't have to be teardrop shaped. No. So I'm curious to see how these go, but we've got the Pen Point Seamless Beauty Sponge, $17, and the Sculpt and Shape Seamless Beauty Sponge, $17. One looks like a water droplet that's had a part cut out. Shaved off it. And yeah. one looks like a square with a triangle on the top. Correct. They're interesting. They are. So hopefully they're good. But um, they are, yeah, very strange. They're out now, though, if you're interested. From an Australian indie brand called mm -hmm. Glaminatrix Cosmetics, we see an Easter pastel gold duo collection. So this is a set of six pastel metallic duochrome eyeshadows, and they all shift gold. So we've got Egg Hunt, which is a peach and orange to gold. We've got Bonnet, which is a lavender to gold. Chick, which is a light yellow to gold. Hopping is a light green to gold. Candy Egg is a baby pink to gold. And Bunny is a baby blue to gold. Uh, the, the set is available now for 60 Australian dollars at Glaminatrix Cosmetics. And I think they're pretty. I think they're really pretty too. Bonnet and Egg Hunt are just gorge. Yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen them shift different colours other than just gold. Yeah. But I do think for a set of um, sort of pastel, I, I wouldn't call it like they're shimmers, but they're, yeah. they're duochromes, but they're more like, they look more metallic. Um, I think it's a really nice sampling of colours. I think this is really cute. This is really fun. Appropriate um, for Easter. Yeah, appropriate for Easter. but all And you don't see Easter collections. No, you Maybe don't. Maybe we will this year. Yeah. Maybe we will. We saw heaps of Chinese New Year. We saw heaps yeah. of Valentine's Day. I know, like last year, uh, Makeup Revolution did their little egg yeah. palettes. Um, but that was pretty much about it. Mm, so, there were a couple, because I remember us talking about how, like, I kind of don't get into Easter because mm -hmm. I can't have the chocolate. So little makeup gifts, nice idea. Yeah. And there was a little bit, but it wasn't a lot. It but wasn't a lot. I reckon this year it'll be, there'll be more. There'll be more of it. Yeah, but I and think, we'll start seeing it really soon. Yeah, but this is what, I, this is how I want to see it. Yeah. So, you know, there's a the whole pastel trend, which um, we're going to see more of in this mm. episode. And, you know, it is, it's either your jam or you're not. Yeah. But I feel like even if you don't get the pastel trend, you can incorporate at least one of these into your looks and it be really special. So yeah. I think this is done really well. All right. We've got a new product from Good Molecules. So this is the Caffeine Energized Hydrogel Eye Patches. Um, so it is available now on Beautylish and getgoodmolecules.com. You get a set of 30 patches for $18 and they de-puff, smooth, hydrate and refresh the eye um, day or night. They've got caffeine, niacinamide, acetol, tetrapeptide tre 5. Tetrapeptide 5, there we go. Hyaluronic acid, aloe, um, so it reduces inflammation. Um, so, yeah, if you like good molecules, which I don't mind them, they're yeah, good. And I you like, like eye patches. I like eye patches in this format. So do I. I feel like it's a lot more cost effective. Yeah, yeah. Um, than buying like the individual like duo packs yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and I, like, I, I feel like there's a lot of wasted packaging with that. Generally, you'll buy a pack of like five, you know, sachets for like 18 bucks. So yeah. 30 sets, I would actually, I would, I would use this. Yeah. If I was interested in eye patches. Fair. Which they, they can be good. Yeah, they can. I think if you find ones that work for you, 
Yeah. They're like kind of life changing. Have you tried the milk ones? Not yet. No. Oh, they're really good. Yeah, I'll have to give them Which a is go. annoying because we can't access them. <laughs> and they are the type that you have to buy like five or six yeah, for yeah, like yeah. 18 US dollars or something. Bugger. But they are very good. All right. We have. This is trash. I know, and I can't remember the brand name. Uh, Gucci. 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 We don't talk about Gucci makeup very often. Do they release much? Because it's trash. Um, they we don't. We talk re- a lot about trash. Let's yeah, be real here. They don't Hayley. release a lot. They don't release too much. Um, and this is why, because we have a whole bunch of metallic lipsticks. Mm-hmm. The end. Goodbye. Yep. Not really. Um, so there are nine in total. And get this, one third of them are blue and green shades. What are they doing? I like, don't even know. I, then is, we also have a silver, yeah. which, you know, and there's like a bronzy gold. Mm. I don't even know what the fuck this shit is. So, look, I'm, I've got a few feels about this. Firstly, the image looks hideous mm. this would not make me buy anything that's in this gucci photo. do do this a yeah. lot with and like i don't i don't really i'm not too bothered by that but i'm i'm very very bothered by the product but it doesn't even make the product look good it doesn't at all it makes the product look shit yeah i actually like okay i wouldn't wear my liner like that but i'm more inclined to buy a black liner from this photo Correct. than i am I'm Based more inclined off that to liner, I'm, which looks yeah. very well done. Yeah, or I'm more inclined to buy her bracelet or yeah. her feathers. Or yeah. the last thing I want to buy is that lipstick. I'm more inclined to get a fucking teardrop tattoo. tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> and so, that's never happening yeah, ever. That's true. So I think the thing with this is it's supposed to be like they call it gothic. Mm. So it's ultra pigmented color with a metallic finish, and mm. they say that it's got like. Um, dark undertones and I understand what they're doing I feel like it isn't for Gucci's market and if this was something like Black Moon Cosmetics Mm. I'd be like okay you've got you've got a sort of more gothic sort of alternative brand this this is not for me but it's on brand yeah whereas these lipsticks look cheap the packaging really angers me. It looks like something off AliExpress. Yeah, it looks really cheap. So I don't know what they're doing. I'm not into it. And for 46 US dollars, um, you're not getting my money. You're not getting my money at all. No. I'd, no, I prefer to flush it down the toilet. All right, let's move on to Huda so I can repress that Gucci memory. Yes, let's do it. We have three new palettes from Huda Beauty. Mm-hmm. So these are the pastel obsessions Mm -hmm. it seems so we have three shades there's rose mint and lilac and it looks like they've got a new metallic jelly formula it is a tie-dye swirl style eyeshadow and it's supposed to give a high shine finish says the shimmers are sheer with insane sparkle that layer beautifully over the matte shades to add shine and dimension all right, so these are also launching 1st of March. They're going to be 29 US dollars each, um, and, you know, you can get them wherever you buy Huda. Uh, look, we have been seeing one of these, the mm. Rose one sort of sneak peeked a lot. I think it was in a, um, a catalog or something. Yeah. Um, so we knew that these were coming, and I think this is very Huda. I think this this very Huda. Not only is did she start the capsule sort of eyeshadow palette trend mm. even before ColourPop. Yeah. Um, but I feel like when she did the sort of neons that was at the start of the neon trend, she did the nudes when nudes were sort of coming back, and now she's doing pastels when mm. pastels are taking off. So I think she's on the pulse with what's sort of currently trending. I'm curious to see what these swirled ones are like. I mm. kind of like the idea of having a sheer topper that you can layer because with pastels, like it's more about adding dimension because it's a sort of one, it's a light color story. Yep. You don't add dimension so much with adding in dark browns and whatnot because it's pastels. Mm. I have seen a lot of people be like, oh, these are more um, nude palettes with a pop of rose or pop of mint or pop of lilac. But I like that about that. And that mm. was sort of what she did with the um, neons as well was that, you know, there's a neon pink, but it also has like 
yellows and oranges. Mm. So for me personally, I wouldn't buy these because I don't like pastels. And also um, I don't really like her formula. Mm. I find that you have to work at them to make them look good. Um, but if I was into pastels, I think this is a very wearable sort of way to wear them. Like yeah. I like that they've put in a couple of nudes. I like the rose one has a peach and a yellow and some rose colors. I like the purple one has mauves, purples and peachy browns. Like I think that you can create full color stories or full looks using these. I think it's pretty smart, but it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Yeah, I feel like she's just sort of taken some of her old palettes and revamped them a bit. Um, these could be called the mini, um, what was her last palette called? Oh, the retrograde. Yeah, these yeah. could be like mini retrograde palettes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this new jelly formula is interesting. I hope that I'll be able to get into a Sephora before it's all like dug Destroy out it, with yep. people's fucking grubby fingers. Um and I think it's interesting, like, uh, I don't take away from it that this jelly formula is a sheer formula. I actually take away that it's the shimmers because they're like two separate sentences. So they mention the metallic jelly formula that gives a gorgeous high shine, fin high shine finish and then the shimmers are sheer with insane sparkle. And if you look at, like, if you look at the purple palette, for example, the lilac one, um, a couple of the shades, they do look like that sort of, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like a, um, pressed sort of translucent pigment. Yeah. Um, so look, I don't know. And you can never go off Huda swatches because they're, they're, not they're never, ever accurate, but like, I don't hate these, but they're not for me. Yeah. I, like I'm, I can tell I'm exactly straight, straight off the bat. I do very much like the lilac one. But I'm not like, oh, I need to go and spend my fucking 50 something Australian dollars on that. Like, it's fine. I can totally live without it. All right. Lime Crime, they have an upcoming Fairy Garden collection. We don't have a release date yet, um, but they we have seen a whole bunch of new things. Mm. So firstly, we've seen lid lights. So these are new eyeshadows yes um they look very much like those duos that they had to recall or yes. no, they had to discontinue because their were, pans were rusting yeah and it was nasty like yeah. look it up yeah. because um that was a that was a, a drama one of the many dramas that, that was Lime a yeah. have experienced but these sort of look like a similar thing where they almost look like a wet yeah um, they do a bit don't they yeah they look like a cream almost yeah so interesting but that comes in uh, six different shades. So you've got a champagne, an icy lavender, an indigo blue, a gold, a golden mint with lavender, whatever that means, and a mauvey pink. And then we have body light in three shades. So these are liquid illuminators for the body. There's two new shades of wet cherry gloss. So there's a sparkly mint and an iridescent blue lavender. There's uh, new shades of unicorn hair. So we've got a deep violet purple and an electric blue. Um, so one's called Genie, one's called Mystic, and that's their uh, colored hair dye. And then they have a uh, unicorn hair star mist. So there's a twilight, which is a pewter glitter and firefly, which is a gold glitter. And that is pretty much sparkly hairspray. Mm. So um, this seems like a, it's funny though, because the way they've done these images, you're like, okay, yeah, it looks nice and fairy like. Whimsical. It's whimsical. It's in a nice, like, dark sort of forest. But when you actually look at the products yeah. individually, yeah. they're not at all cohesive. Not at all. This collection is just like Random. product vomit. <laughs> yeah, we decided to, we wanted to do single eyeshadows. There we go. There's we decided we wanted to do worked. body illuminators. There's there we go. three that worked. Yeah. Here's two new wet cherry glosses that look like wet cherry glosses that potentially could have existed in our range. Range a yeah. year ago yeah like, and here's, here's some more hair colors that we already have yeah correct um, and here's more hair glitter yeah so there's nothing cohesive about this it's just yeah just a they, it's weird the cohesiveness is the photo shoot yes Let's they they knew that they couldn't just release six random eyeshadows three random body crap two yeah. wet cherry glosses two new hair colors and some fucking hair glitter on their own because they don't stand up and then people won't pay attention people to it. won't give even half a shit mm -hmm. so 
they had a photo shoot. Yes, that's pretty much what it seems like, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, good luck to you. All right, so we do have an update on that. It should be out by the time you're watching this, and they are cream eyeshadows. Like, you put your finger in it to apply, it moves it around a lot. They look not good in the pan. They scare me. No, I, but, yeah. I dislike it even more now. Yes, but... It's good. There we go. All right. Linda Holberg, um, they have launched a new product. Mm. Now, I was expecting this to be multiple shades of a yeah, new me product. Too. But it's one shade of one new product. So this is called the Interstellar. Um, and essentially it is, they call it a high-tech innovative liquid eyeshadow formula that dries within seconds. Um, and they do show sort of swatch, like really built up to the point that it looks chunky af yeah so you can get it sort of like a metallic finish or if you blend it out it looks like a sheer sparkle which i think looks gorgeous really pretty and yep. that's how i think it's probably designed to be used and that's how i would like to use it um but it is a soft sort of cool toned gold liquid eyeshadow uh, it looks like it's got look i'm going out on a limb here and saying it looks like it's mainly the sparkly pigment. And is then it's the only like, yeah. Yeah, it's like that's the it's color like a to clear it. clear base. Yeah. Gold sparkly pigment. Yeah, and, and it's so finely milled that, you know, in the tube and heavily built up, it looks metallic. But, you know, it's it's a thing that could be a topper. Mm. It's a thing you could wear on its own. It looks gorgeous how I she's think wearing it's pretty, it. Yeah. Yeah, she's wearing it all over the lid and then like a big, like a winged eyeliner. I think this could be really pretty. Um, I love the color. I love a sort of cool toned gold. I think yeah. it's, and it's beautiful over nudes and pretty much any color. Mm. A cool toned gold can go over it. So I think this is a smart color choice to begin with. I'd love to see what the formula is like. We don't have a price at the moment, um, but you know, it's out when you're watching this. Yeah. So it's not out when we're filming this, so we can't give you all the details. But um, yeah, that's a new product. Okay, we have a little bit of information here. Um, this is regarding a new brand that's starting. And usually we would not give two shits about this, but it's a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. So Frank Toscan, which is the former MAC Cosmetics founder, mm. and Vic Casale, who is the former MAC Cosmetics and Cover FX formulator. Interesting. They're getting together and they're making a brand called Mob Beauty. Now, there is no website for it. There's no Instagram for it. There's nothing. There are brands called like Mob Cosmetics and mm -hmm. shit like that, but it's not them. Um, they've been, they did do um, a Reddit AMA where they were going to be talking about like uh, product innovation, clean formulation, Ooh. packaging, stuff like that. So people could like ask some questions. Um, but I think this is interesting because cover effects now cover effects have been quiet lately. Um, now that's not to say that this has anything to do with that, but I think that this is very interesting. Yeah. Like if you've got two powerhouses, yeah, like, these are big um, wigs. do you know, it's going to make some waves. Mm. It's going to be a, like a legit brand. It's not going to be a, um, Buddy Florence. No, what's what Florence by Mills? But Florence by Mills. This like, isn't just some, gonna like, be. Man. This isn't gonna be a house beauty. Yeah, thing. It's, it it's, sounds like it's gonna be something really this interesting. Is legit. I don't, I don't like the name Mob Beauty. No, I don't either. And also, when I saw this information, the first feeling that I had was hardcore criticism. I was, and that's when I realized like, oh dear, I'm going to judge this brand so hard. Like just bring out one glittery fucking lipstick. Just do it. Just yeah. do it. Go on. But I feel like that's not a cover effects thing. No. And I'm, and I'm, traditionally that's not really a MAC thing either. I feel like MAC sort of was. Um, they were very pro. Very, they were a professional brand when they started. Yeah, but I feel like if you look at the essence of MAC, lately they have been um, sort of pandering a lot to sort of Instagrammy trends. trends and whatnot. Yeah. So they their last few holiday collections have been quite glittery and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
but I feel like at the core of it, their products they'd like to release, they would probably be more the type of brand that would recommend a lipstick and a glitter to put on top yes. for the, you know, sort of effect of it rather than going, here's a, a stick of subpar fucking glittery lipstick. Mm. I feel like they've only done that to stay current. Relevant. So I reckon this could be something that could be a good brand. Like well, it could a good, be. Like a well-made brand. Also, are they going to like be able to rise above all of the like trendy trash but with a name like mob beauty i don't know they will i think that's what i'm concerned yeah. about i feel like that name sort of says it all it's sort of you know we're we're trying to go after the mob mentality the mob mentality and the makeup community and yeah. the trendy shit and unless the bye 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 like it's not it's capital m o or capital M, capital O, capital B. So it's yeah. kind of like, Might stand you know, something. Mac, you know, uh, it's all capitals. So mob might stand for something, but when you read it at face value, it's kind of like. Yeah, mm. it might stand for something, but I feel like what they're just doing is trying to um, repeat the thing that. Made Mac that work. made Mac work. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they're like, we, we found the formula and we're just going to do it again. Do what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll keep, we'll keep you guys up to date mm. with that. All right, Revolution Beauty have released their take on glass skin trend. Who did this recently? Was it Elf? Yes, it was oh, Elf. They're fusing K-beauty trend with makeup. K-beauty is makeup. <coughs> <coughs> Shit. Are they achieving clear glass skin goals? Sure, whatever. Um, they've got a bunch of products. The one that is of note mm is the glass mirror illuminator because they have copied Luna Luna Beauty. Beauty. They did it with their palettes as well. Their copy of NARS. Yeah. Their um, holiday holiday palettes. 2018. Yeah, yeah. So this is pretty much, yeah, copying successful packaging of NARS and Luna Beauty and creating just crap. I just don't... This is why Makeup Revolution has never, ever deserved respect in my opinion yeah this is what's this is what's deterred me from being a fan of it as well correct also because i have tried a few products and they just are pretty trash yeah like i know that they're Some of for them, the price point there's like oh they're not that bad yeah. but they're not good either in my opinion the problem is when i look at a brand like this and i go well you're copying someone else's cool idea yeah so instantly you you don't have my respect and then when i try a product it it's going to take a fuckload for your affordable product and your average formula to impress me. It's going to have to be affordable and the second coming of Jesus formulation. And it's just not. Now, a lot of people like to argue, yeah, but we can't get that stuff in the UK and we can get makeup revolution here or insert other country. What pisses me off is that makeup revolution do know how to innovate themselves. They have some really fucking cool looking shit in this collection. Mm-hmm. And like the um, the glass skin primer, it looks beautiful. They've also got the, um, the face mists. They both look beautiful. It's simple. It's sleek. It looks clean and sexy. It screams glass skin. Just fucking like... Create your own packaging. Yeah. I think it Stop is I think it whipping is, people off. Yeah, I think also because obviously uh Luna Beauty went to a lot of effort to get the right packaging for their um exactly. moon prism pa- powders. And the fact that then within a year someone's just literally copied it. Like it, it is hard to take that seriously or it, almost impossible to take that seriously when you're like, okay, how do I take this brand? Seriously, when they don't take other brands seriously. Correct. They don't um, respect they other don't. brands. So also, why should I respect them? Yeah, but to be fair, with the products I've tried from Revolution, they're like, I've tried some cheap products, like drugstore products, and I would prefer to buy Essence over these. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like a lot of people like to praise them and go, oh, these are... But, they I'm happy to make an exception because... Yeah, they make not- excuses. They make excuses because it suits their narrative and it's yeah. just not fair. If this was my shit being ripped off, I'd be fucking 
furious. I would be furious. Yeah. yeah. But also if it was the, your idea, yeah. if you had put money and time and effort into creating these really cute little sort of geometric highlighters that just worked with your vibe, your brand, you put in all that time and effort and then Makeup Revolution comes along and they're like, Huda. Yeah, they, they, just get it and they go, hello, packaging, yeah. make please. And then they just make some subpar version. Yeah, it would really piss me off. Yeah. Also, like, I feel like there's no there's no reason for it. No. Like, there is no reason they to copy it exactly. With, hey, why not go with that fucking ugly clear plastic packaging for glass skin? Or make it look like a that diamond. That would have worked as well. Whatever the fuck like, it do is. do something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have seen Makeup Revolution come out with things that are innovative within their brand. Mm -hmm. They they haven't been done before or they're a fabulous twist on something that has been done before. Don't just knock people's shit off like it, it means nothing mm. because it does mean something. It's fucking disrespectful and I yeah. don't like it. And I'm not ever going to shut up about that. And I know people are going to be mad at me. They always get mad at me when I'm like, yeah, you know, this do. brand knocks shit off. But it's not okay. And it's like, it's all right for you because it's not your fucking ideas being stolen. Yeah, but also I think people's justification for getting mad at that sort of opinion to me doesn't make sense because generally when we talk about rip-offs, it's people that have taken the colour story and replicated exactly um, to, for a cheaper brand. They're like, well, I can't afford Kat Von D, so why can't I buy it at a cheaper one? And that's okay. If you want those colour stories, like, that, that's a... Yeah, okay, they're taking a, a concept that's already been done. I believe that they could always tweak it and make it better because mm. no product is perfect. And also, I've got to say, I've swatched... We should actually do a video on this. Mm. Swatch some Makeup Revolution dupes against the real thing yeah. and show you just how close the colours are. Yeah. They're not even dupes yeah. half the time. The formula is, and the colours are just... They're not they're even... Not good. They're not good. Yeah, So, but I understand that people are like, oh, I want to have this idea but i mm. can't afford it but the thing that's different about these in my opinion is it's not even replicating a product that you can't afford it's knocking packaging. off packaging you don't need if you want the you know a highlighter that looks like many muas you look for a dupe of the color mm. the fact that they're just like i'm going to steal someone's packaging i'm going to steal nas's packaging and many muas packaging because we're fucking potatoes and we can't think for ourselves like you can't justify that by going but i can't afford many's one because are you walking around going look at my compact look at my compact or are you when you're actually trying to buy something that's more affordable are you trying to actually replicate the product so i don't even think that this flies in this instance because it's just a blatant copy um, which is ridiculous. And it's frustrating to see because it's like you look at what the alternative is, how do, how do brands protect themselves from this? You can, like, patent your packaging, but then Manny's got to fucking take them to court. Yeah, and it's very hard to do. I remember watching a thing about uh, counterfeit products yeah. and pretty much in fashion and, and I'm assuming the same probably would go for, for makeup, makeup for sure 100 percent is would. that people can copy whatever the fuck they want because you can't like patent or copyright like for example this that i'm wearing mm. the thing that is the breach is if it's got your logo on, on it. it yeah so if someone's trying to replicate your brand name or your logo then that is what is protected but you someone can take the exact same material the exact same cut and replicate it and sell it completely legally and that's no problem so this is not illegal it's just shows disrespect to a massive disrespect to other brands and it's like well why should we now respect you as yeah. a brand i don't i don't i, I don't, don't and i like Every time this comes up in conversation, I'm just not even going to look at the comments. Kat will be like, don't go there. Don't yeah, don't go, don't, there, don't. don't go there. Don't go there. But I'm but not going to like yeah. lay down for this shit. No, it's bullshit. Um, let's just run through the products really quickly oh, yeah, so we can we move the that. fuck on. <laughs> uh, there's Glass Skin Illuminating Primer Serum, Glass Skin Primer Illuminating Dewy Finish, Glass Illuminator Ultra Shine Highlighters in three shades. So there's a pale icy pink, a deep gold, and icy white. 
there's black shadow black there's glass shadow palettes one in black ice and one in mirror i was getting ahead of myself um, and then there's glass clear lip gloss there's glass glow fix dewy fixing spray glass shimmer fix iridescent fixing spray and they're all available now if you can be fucked, which I cannot. No. Something that we do like. Yes. Maybe. Kind Maybe of. Maybe possible. Uh, Marc Jacobs Beauty have launched the Glow Away Bronzing Coconut Body Sticks. I mm. don't think I actually like these, but I like it better than what we just talked about. Look, I think they look nice, but I wouldn't use them. No, yeah. no. So it's described as a waterproof all-over body bronzer for an instant natural-looking glow. It blurs the look of imperfections to make skin appear smoother. So bronze blend and blur with Glow Away, the perfect summer accessory glide on the lightweight transfer resistant formula for an all over natural looking bronze and blurred look infused with five forms of coconut who uh, this creamy lightweight body bronzer stick feels nourishing on skin not sticky or oily it comes in three shades there's tantastic which is 14 light tantric is 15 medium and tantalized is 16 deep and they are available now at mark jacobs beauty and sephora they're 39 us dollars each yeah see i actually think these look gorgeous and they do look nice the older like this I'm, I'm in two two minds i think if i was 10 years ago in my like early 20s and i was getting the body out mm. i would smear i would not be able to afford this but no. i would <laughs> love to smear this on my body yeah now, as a person that can't be fucked fake tanning, I would totally use this on my yeah. legs when I'm going out. Because if it's uh, if it doesn't transfer, if it you know, sets dry, they say waterproof. Yeah, waterproof. These actually are really, really great as an alternative to like a bronzer uh, or like a fake tan yeah. or a real tan or body makeup. They can mm. just make your legs and arms look perfected. Yeah. So I would totally go there. My concern is thirty nine US dollars for a stick. I know. How long is that going to last you putting it on your body? For the body too, yeah. But Unless they're very pigmented and like do a, a little stripe down, it's like enough you to do it, the whole yeah. body or like the whole arm yeah. um, or whatever. Maybe so. Um, I think the colours look beautiful. Yeah, they look beautiful on the skin. I don't hate it. Yeah. I'm not sure that I would buy it. I probably wouldn't, but I don't hate it. If I had one somehow, I would totally use it. You give it a go. I would, yeah, I would probably. Enjoy I would give it, it a go too. Yeah. yeah. All right, Milk Makeup have added to their lip range. They've got the Kush Lip Scrub, so it's a conditioning and exfoliating lip scrub for softer, smoother lips in a mess-free twist-up bullet, so you can exfoliate on the go. Mm. So it contains natural sugar crystals and hemp stem exfoliators that buff away flakes. It contains shea, mango, and cocoa butters that soften and improve texture, and it's got hemp-derived cannabis seed oil that hydrates and soothes. So it's now available at Milk Makeup and Sephora for $22. US So, uh, yeah, it's just adding to their sort of hemp lip, Kush lip range. Um, these sort of lip scrub products are becoming quite popular. In sticks, yeah. Yeah, in sticks. Like uh, I think a couple of years ago it was the pots. Yes. And now the sticks are everywhere. Yeah. I just question how effective they are. Like I've used a few and I can't say I've loved them. But I'll, that's not to say that they're not going to improve the longer that they're coming out. So I think this could be all right. My main concern is the twenty-two US dollar price tag. Yeah, I know. Scrub. I would not pay. I would not pay that. I would yeah, not. but it looks no. like the good thing about it is it seems like it's a lip scrub that I'm assuming you can sort of lick off and then it leaves you like with a lip balm. Yeah, yeah. Because I know that some people's concern about this, which I totally feel, is that if you're going to be scrubbing away dead skin cells. Mm. Do you just they've leave to, it there? They've got to go somewhere. No, you have to lick them off or yeah. wipe them off. That's why I don't understand these. I'm assuming this is just going to be like a lip balm with some particles. Bits so you it. get a slight exfoliation yep. as you apply yep. it. I don't think it's supposed to be like a scrub, an actual scrub. Yeah. Because I, I don't know. I don't mm. Look, I don't care about it, but I want this nug shade. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> so their, their lip balms are nice. So, yeah, I've got the know, drink, green dragon one. Yeah, I really like that. I really like yeah. it as well. So I think if, you, if you're if you into it and you're happy to spend 22 bucks for a lip scrub balm, then go for your go life. Go for your life. Mm. All right. We've got a shade expansion from Nabla. Mm -hmm. So um, they have their close-up futuristic foundation 
which previously had 20 shades, now has an additional 10, making it a total of 30 shades. So the new shades are, there's three light shades, L15, L35, L45, which I'm very happy about because I am in between L40 and L50. Perfect. So now there's L45. Uh, there's two new medium shades, M05 and M45. Uh, three new tan shades, T15, T25, T35, and two new deep shades, uh, D05 and D45. So yeah, if you're interested in this foundation but you couldn't find a shade match previously, there is more shades out there, which is great. Um, it's pretty much, it's a foundation that's been out for about a year mm. and it's supposed to give a soft focus effect. Uh, it's like a medium buildable coverage um, and it gives a long lasting luminous matte finish. So it is more of that moussey matte finish. Pure Cosmetics have launched their Blushing Act Skin Perfecting Powders. So this comes in two shades and it's available now. The shades are very beautiful and pretty in peach. Um, and they're blushes. Yeah, they're like speckled blushes. Yeah. They talk a lot about nourishing energy complex and serotonin complex and how it's meant to be the second coming of Jesus and it'll do your laundry. But at the end of the day, it, they're matte blushes. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty much. Pretty much. They say that you can, you know, pretty much go from soft and flushed to vibrant and bold. Mm. So it's a lightweight, buildable formula. But um, yeah, it, look, I like a buildable blush, but so most blushes tend to be buildable. Yeah, and some I, more so than yeah, others. Yeah, and I agree with you. Like all these sort of good for you skincare ingredients, I question how effective that is going to be on this area of the face. Yeah, over your primer, skincare. foundation, you know, yeah, powder, o- pa- yeah. powder er- yeah, over everything. <clears throat> how effective really is that? nourishing energy complex and serotonin complex probably not and it's probably in such a small quantity that it doesn't do anything like we put it in there so we could mention it yes so i but think skincare infused makeup yay see there We're we right. go so yeah 26 us dollars now at pure cosmetics i've not seen this before yes and i just got a bit excited this was just put in last minute well yes, yes. so we got new sleek makeup news. we did can, okay, so it's a Sunset Vibes collection and it includes three limited edition products. It's available now on Sleek Makeup. The thing that got me going, ooh, is the Chasing the Sun Eye Divine Eyeshadow Palette. So mm. this is £8.99. You know what this gives me vibes of? Jaclyn Hill. Correct, Amanda. Jaclyn Hill uh, ver- uh, Volume 2. Like yes. a bit compressed version. Yeah, like a wrap it all up in a pretty little bow yeah i don't hate it yeah i don't hate it either i don't hate it i would look here's the thing about sleek palettes i can't bring myself to declutter any of the ones that i have because they're actually really really fucking nice and also i think the sleek a sleek eyeshadow palette was arguably one of my first ever eyeshadow palettes yeah. like that wasn't a quad or yeah a yeah yeah like a, a proper palette like a proper palette so i've got one that's like got a broken lid and yeah, i'm like yeah. i can't get rid you of can't you can't get rid of it um but it is really nice thing about them very for the most part really good formula really like great pigmentation better than makeup revolution yes um but also not massive and the thing about them is they're 12 pan palettes and they're like this big. Yeah, they're, they're very great. compact. They're great. Look, one thing I want to mention also about your excitement over this. Yes. Because in the last few videos, I have seen a few people um, get their knickers in a bit of a twist over the fact that we poo-poo a lot of colour makeup. Um, but then sometimes we say that like nude makeup is boring. Mm. I think the thing that where we come from is that we see new palettes and makeup releases Every single day. goddamn day. And we have been for years. years. So for us, it's not so much that we are like, oh, nude is boring and colour is unwearable. Yeah. It's just that we want things to stand out as being different. Yeah. I love nude makeup. I love coloured makeup, but I want them to capture my imagination. I want to look at that and go, I need to add that to my collection because I don't have it. Yeah. The formulas, the textures, the way the colours are being put together are so different for me and inspiring for me that 
I don't go, oh, that's boring or I'm not going to wear that. Like, it's, what do you think? I am a fucking clown that wants to wear primary colors all over my face every day of the week. So I think, you know, we are kind of we what we say is an end result of a long process of thinking. Of course. And I think people that watch our content consistently know exactly where we're coming from. But people come in, they're like, you think everything's boring or unwearable? Eh. But I think well, what this shows is that if you come up with a color story that is cohesive, is a little bit fresh and mixes color and nudes nicely that you can actually want to reach for it to mm -hmm. use, we like it. Doesn't yeah. have to be fucking Dior brand or it could be Sleek for all we care. Exactly. Sleek um, who rarely release new palettes. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the thing about what we do, we don't just sit down and film these videos once a week and go through Instagram. Mm. We are seeing this stuff every day, all yeah. day, every day, several times a day. Like we are inundated with new makeup, even if we're not physically holding it and using it in our hands. So we look at almost everything in this episode and most episodes and we go, seen it, yeah. boring. I think also the problem is that we have pretty good memories for makeup. Absolutely. So when we, when we started using makeup, which like I've been using quite a lot of makeup for at least 10 years and yeah. I've probably been using um, makeup for nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when the Naked palette was first released. Absolutely. I remember when... A lot of things were first released. So for me, it's not like because I'm interested in makeup, I don't go, I come to every episode and I forget that makeup has ever existed. Oh, this is exciting. Look, it's got yellow. Like I remember all the palettes that have yellow and I'm exactly. like, is this I've any got different? like fucking 40 of them yeah. for Christ's so, sake. So we are picky and we do have high standards. But I think, yeah, what, what this shows is that uh, if you watch the makeup breakup on Wednesday, uh, we were actually pretty inspired by um, the Jaclyn Hill palette. I think some of the colors she chose were really, really beautiful. It's just a really big palette. If they condense that down to a 15 pan palette, that Look, would be gorgeous. Put it down and into sleek, a 12 pan palette. Almost, and but they are, don't have my magenta. And these are little pans as well. They're yeah. not gigantic standard size eye pan, mm -hmm. eyeshadow pans in a gigantic palette. Yeah. So, Look. We give it a thumbs up. Well done. We do. Sleek. We like it, Sleek. Um, and it's eight ninety nine pounds. Awesome. We we also have the firing it up highlighting palette for nine pound ninety nine and the drip and highlight elixir for six pound ninety nine. Can I also give them props for having a highlighter palette that has all powders? I know because I don't mind the formula of their highlighting palettes, but I don't like how they mix. Like some of them have three creams and one powder. Some of them yeah, have two powders, two creams. I don't really like how they mix them either. I don't, but all powder. <clears throat> it's not really my jam. But no. Yeah. But all powder, I'm like, good, go, you good thing. So that's available now at Sleek. So Excellent. Go Sleek, go. Smashbox. You smashed it. I don't know. If you Smashing have. it. Smashing We've got it. a new primer. I don't want it. Boycott primer. That's my next step. Um, yeah. Photo Finish Vitamin Glow Primer. It's infused with vitamins... B, C, and E to help revitalize, hydrate, and prep skin for makeup. So it's meant to be a lightweight water gel formula. Okay, I want it now. Water gel. I like water gel. Shit. And I was going to say, I know that you're boycotting primer, and I totally understand why. <laughs> yeah. Because for me, I don't think primer enhances much. I feel like it's... Yeah. If you've got decent skincare, I don't really think you need Correct. primer. I agree. Yep. Um, or if your skin is doing okay. Like if you've got concerns like pores and stuff, yeah. yep, use yeah. a primer. But I want to say some of my favorite primers are from Smashbox. I know. My favorite primer, a primer that I will never boycott and I will the buy. The primer water? The primer water. I actually think that does something for me. It's not a lot, but it definitely does yeah. something. And it's a Smashbox brand. So, you know, I'm not actually boycotting But even primers, like this silicon one that um, is supposed to mattify for, I don't know, 18 hours or yeah, something. Yeah. I think that's a nice one. The illuminating ones are nice. They have their primers are just good. They do make good primers, to like, be fair. So this, I'm like, I will give you a crack. I'm just okay. We'll read, gel. we'll read out more claims, but I'm All just right. salty at when it's being released in Australia. I know. We'll get there. We'll get, we'll get there. there. We'll bitch about that too. If you're new around here, you might want to switch off now because we're just about to upset you with our rants. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> like We're I said. We're at rant o'clock. It is. It's rant o'clock. It's 5.53 rant, rant o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Love it. All right. So, it's a lightweight water gel formula that awakens and refreshes skin. It's infused with vitamins B, C, and E, as I mentioned. It instantly hydrates, softens, and nourishes skin. So, makeup goes on smoothly and effortlessly. It's packed with good for you. Uh, good for your skin, antioxidants, and birch water. Can I also interject and just say this is the time where if you're going to put skincare ingredients into products, it's, it's going to be, it's in, gonna a be in the primer. For, for sure. got to be in the primer. I agree. It's also cruelty-free, vegan, and gluten-free. So if you are a celiac, you can eat it. <laughs> um, so it's available now at smashbox.com. Sounds great, doesn't it? Yes, when's it coming to Australia? It's coming to Australia on the 2nd of July. In March, it's coming to Italy, UK and Russia. In April, it's coming to India. In June, it's coming nowhere no. because... In May, you know, it's coming nowhere. Uh, no. They're taking and then a break. They are. They're taking a little break. A summer break. A summer break. Mm-hmm. And then in uh, July, it's coming to Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and Korea. So We're fuck us. Ma- that, that is a pretty big market that they're, yeah, they're but fucking No, with. no, but fuck us yeah. until July. Am I right? Which is when we probably don't even need this. And to be fair, by the time it rolls around, your product's going to be completely irrelevant. We're going to be like, what? Who? I want the next thing. I don't care. Yeah. I'll just wait for the next thing. Well, so, the next thing may be another primer. So... Uh, Two faced. Could. Jared has done a hashtag <laughs> TF sneaky head. peek. Oh. Um, so they're introducing the new advanced prime and, po- and poreless faced. Let's say that again. Advanced primed and poreless face powder and face primer. It's the primer and the powder with the puff. Yeah. So it's a primed and poreless range and is a primer and a powder. Correct. And a puff. And a puff. Coming soon. So it's supposed to Coming leave... poon. It's supposed to be for skin so poreless and smooth, it's unreal. Unreal. Okay, cool. So pretty much it's a blurring primer yeah, and, and a uh, powder. powder, translucent powder. So Excellent. coming soon. So yeah, if you don't want your vitamin C thing that you've got to wait till July for... Yeah, fuck that. We'll probably have to wait till next July we for this one. I don't wait that long for anything ever. All right, Urban Decay have added new products to their brow range. So mm. they've got two new brow products and they've also extended some shades from another product. So they've got the Inked Brow long wear brow gel this is us 26 dollars. it's available in seven shades it's described as a semi-permanent long wear brow gel that creates sculpted arches for up to 60 hours interesting so this is pretty much uh looks like it's in a look a lip balm type bottle mm. and it's got a little oh, lip gloss lip gloss yeah lip, yeah lip balm Duh lip gloss bottle and it's got a like a little angled brush and you pretty much paint your brows on yeah. and it's supposed to last up to 60 hours yeah interesting look i i've got i've got some reservations about this i have been saying recently like a lot of brow products come with like really fucking dicky applicators yeah. um, when they're in like tubes and stuff. And I'm like, just put it in a f- like angle brush for yeah. fuck's sake. Like, come on, someone. Yeah. Like work it out. And now it's here and I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that um, the product's going to be too liquid in the tube. When you pull it out, you're going to have to like wipe off yeah. the excess on the inside. It's going to start to get messy over time. Look, I think that's definitely going to happen, mm. but I feel like this is this is an equivalent of a brow version, and I'm just thinking of the eyeliner I'm wearing today, which yeah, is yep. the JD Glow Matte yes, Liner, yep. where it's the same thing. It's a it's a tube. You have a brush. You take it off. You have to wipe off some excess. Yep. You paint it on. It dries down. And I feel like that's going to be the brow version. Yes, absolutely. So you pa- like. I think this is going to be an interesting concept for people like me, that have very, very sparse brows and you've got to fill in a lot of it. Yeah. But I feel like it's going to bring back that block brow trend. Yeah, I think it will too. I think this is going to be best suited to people who need to fill in like hair-like yeah. areas. And I like the idea. The brush looks good. It doesn't look too big or bulky. Like I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. But I think if you're trying to like 
colour in a very sparse brow, like you It'd said. It'd be too block brow. Block brow, for but sure. But I do I do agree with you. Like, if you do little, like, mimic little hairs. Yeah. And then you can... It's nice and little, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I yeah. Think it could be all right. I, like, I would gif- definitely give this a crack. I'd give it a go, too. Because um, I do sort of fill in my brows with a pomade or a powder or a bigger pencil, and then I'll go in with a smaller... Just for some, just like, for texture. Some texture, and yeah. I think this yeah. could be really cool. Yeah, I agree. But my question is, like, is it lasting 60 hours through removing makeup, or is it for people that... I- barely put any makeup on and then when they wash their face they don't use heavy duty stuff look i know people do that and yeah but um yeah i think i know people that leave lashes on for days i know i know i know i know people who super glue their lashes on and leave them on for weeks don't ever do that folks um but but this point i don't think this will last through my makeup removal routine unless Uh, it's a stain yeah i don't think it's meant to be a stain i think it's just meant to be able to stay in your brows for up to 60 hours i don't understand why brands sort of put those sort of time frames in with makeup wear time because it's gross yeah and there's gonna be like there's people who are smart and they understand it's extremely important to very carefully remove your makeup at the end of the night so that you go to bed with nice clean skin um but then there's going to be people who are like 60 hours oh my god i don't have to take it off for 60 hours i'm gonna get that and then they're gonna wear it in their fucking brows for 60 hours and their hairs are going to slowly fall out over time because it's like putting mascara on your brows every day. Yeah. It's not a good idea. I'm, I'm curious though because maybe if you're the type of person that wears not much makeup and you can just gently use a gentle cleanser and mm. it stays in. Maybe. Maybe. All it says is the long wear formula is flexible and allows playtime for application. It won't flake, fade or transfer. Mm. Apply product directly onto brow hairs or skin with a cruelty-free angled brush to create your desired shape, even if you have sparse brows, and it is semi-permanent. I think think this would be cool for people that um, don't have brows. Mm. So for whatever reason, a lot of people don't have brows, um, and you want to... You know, like when people have to draw in their brows and they've got to do the whole shape every yeah, day yeah, yeah. and that would be such a headache. Yeah. Even if a little bit residual stays through washing off your makeup, at least you have a guide for the next day. Yeah. I think that's the people that would probably benefit from Maybe, this the most. Yeah. I don't know. Look, it's interesting. Yeah. But they do have other things. So they've also got the Brow Beta Micro Fine Brow Pencil and Brush. I want this. Yes, this is 21 US dollars. Again, it's in seven shades and it's a long lasting waterproof brow pencil with a microfine teardrop tip for precise application. So, oh, wait, no, that's not the one I want. Continue. Oh, you want the next one? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is pretty much just filling a gap because mm. um, they do have a micro brow pencil, but it's on a. It's in a dual pencil. Yeah. Um, so this one is just a smaller filler filling in brow pencil. It's yeah. just a gap in their range. Uh, what they've extended the range of is the um, brow, blade. brow blade ink stain and yes. waterproof pencil. So this is twenty six US dollars. It came out when they first launched this brow range. They've added in the shade blackout and cool, cool cookies. Cookie. So they now have nine shades. Yeah. Um, and this is what Haley is interested in. So it's a it micro is. pencil on one side and an ink brush like, applicator. On yeah, the like other. A, yep. like a, a liquid liner, liner for your brows. Yeah, yep. and this is cool because yeah, you can do the micro brow penciling or you can draw on um, individual hairs. individual hairs, yep. which is great. Yep. And it must be a popular product if they're expanding the range. So yep, that's all available sure. now. It's all vegan, cruelty free, and at Urban Decay. Excellent. From Victoria Beckham Beauty, we have a new smoky eye brick. This is called Silk. So it is inspired by um, runway looks, essentially. Um, But it is a satin shine finish smoky eye brick. Mm -hmm. Uh, So four satin shades. Um, There's warm golden tones, champagnes, ambers, um, and it's launching in March at Victoria Beckham Beauty. I love the color story of this. I'm so sad that they're all like shimmer. 
Look, I'm not. Look, I'm. I get. I get that, but I'm also okay with this, only because they're the four bricks they brought out prior uh, matte heavy are all they're satin mats mm. uh, some of them have a bit of shimmer in them but i feel like again that's added in just for blending blendability mm. it doesn't actually look shimmery on the eye they are they appear matte or satin on the eye so um if you're into some shimmer and you like the quality of her makeup or the sort of um, style of her makeup which is fairly minimal this gives you that shimmer element that you can pair with one of the other matte ones. Um, so I do ideally think that she should bring out mixed pans. Um, so half shimmer, half matte. But I think because she's got a range of satin matte palettes, I'm okay with her bringing out a full shimmer one because this They're is nice colors yeah, too. this is more for people that probably already have one. Yeah, and they just want to have like the two little cute palettes. So it goes so well with mine. With it would. I just don't like that they always put the biggest pan as the really light I shade. It doesn't need to be like I, that. I, I'm one for sort of like, I don't like frosty eyeshadows. No. And that's what she's done in a lot of her palettes. And I'm like, oh, that makes it really hard to want to try a lot of them because I know that you don't it's use too much frosty eyeshadow, eyeshadow for me. So, okay. yeah, but there we go. That is it. Awesome. Um, but before we go, we do need to dedicate this episode to a beauty news VIP. And this week's VIP is Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, for supporting beauty news. And thank you to everyone who supports beauty news in whichever way you choose to do it. Kat, what's going to be our emoji this week? All right, I've decided the emoji is going to be a megaphone because yes. we'll be ranting the rant, whole time. Rant, <laughs> rant, 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 rant. Staying, staying alive, alive, staying <laughs> alive. Rant, rant. Correct. There you go. Mm. Megaphones. Megaphones. There so you right. go. right. Ranting is good for the soul. It's good to get the shit out. Don't bottle it up. No. No, don't bottle up shit. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.